Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to compress a really large video file. Now, <coughs> when you download um, Blu-ray rips online, you can you often you often wonder like how do they do it? I mean, some of the uh, Blu-ray high quality files, 1080p, they can compress it to about anywhere from 1 to 2 gigabytes and uh, 720p Blu-ray files, they, they rip it and they compress it uh, down to 700 megabytes. Like, how do they do it? And the quality is okay. Um, and so, how do you compress a file to so such a small size without losing uh, a lot of a uh, uh, video quality? Now, the, the trick is I uh, figured out is using an, a software to do some tweaking of the the video stream. So, in this case, you can use this tool. Uh, handbrake. Uh, if you go to their website, it's handbrake.fr, as in France, not not .com. So if you go to handbrake.fr, you can download Handbrake, the latest version for Windows. And it's completely free; it's open source. So once you download and install it, this is the. I'll show you the interface. This is the uh, Handbrake interface. Now, <coughs> you can start uh, in re-encoding your, your video. So the first thing you do, of course, is go to the source and pick either a folder, if you have multiple files to compress, or uh, to select file. Pick one of the files you have, and it will load. Uh, in, the, in the tools and options, you can, uh, s you can set where do you want this, for example, where do you want to put out, output files, right? And select a folder where you put the output video file and the format. You can ask you to rename your, your output for a video or leave it as same as the source. In this case, I put the source. So it would be the same name as my original file, but in the, in the different folder that I named media. You can also change case, replace underscore, all these. I'm not asking to, to do anything. And as the output file is always in MP4 format, but if you don't do anything, the default is it will save the MP4 as M4V, which sometimes is not recognized by some of the online sources if you upload it online, for example. So I, I'll choose this as always use MP4. So it's easier for or the system to handle. So now that you have set the path where the, the output file is, we can start doing the compressing. Now first thing you need to do, make sure container is MP4 of course, and tick this one, web optimized. That will reduce your uh, file size and also make it more uh, smooth to stream online. And the second one, don't touch anything on the picture, uh, but just make sure in the picture you can see your X aspect ratio, the size of your your video. Don't I don't I don't recommend changing it. In this case, I'm compressing a 720p, 1280 by 720 video. Don't touch anything here. Filters, you don't need to touch anything. I'm just showing you the very basic trick how to compress, say, 720 down to a 700, 800 megabytes file. There's also other things you can do of, of the software, of course, but I'm just telling you the basic trick to compress it. So, the, in, so we're only doing this besides web optimized. We're only doing this video and audio uh, tabs. That would reduce this file. This file originally is is uh, you can see the length, an hour and a half, 720p HD. This is about two point something gigabytes. Using this trick, you can compress it down below 700 megabytes, it's like 600 some, something megabytes. Now this is only only thing you need to do. Web optimized video codec. Make sure this is H.264. Frame rate. By default, this is set some, to something different. You need to change it to peak frame rate and 23.97. That's basically 24 frames per second. 
and optimize video. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Quality here by default is in on constant quality a twenty RF. Uh, this will give you pretty much the same size as the original two point something gigabytes because it's pretty good quality. And you can lower it down to thirty and but the result is sometimes the it's two gigabytes, sometimes eight hundred megabytes. In my experience that doesn't give you a constant size. So if you take this one, average bit rate, reduce it down to nine hundred. So anywhere from seven hundred to nine hundred, you'll be okay and it'll give you a significantly less size. So the original file, of course, because it's high quality, the bit rate is much higher, it's like 2800. So we're reducing this to, to down to 900. So yes, we're losing quality, but if size is a concern, using 900, you reduce quality, but not to a point that you, it's, it's too bad. So you can do even do 700, but uh, 900 is recommended if you have uh, like action movie, like a lot of mo motions in there. So let's do 900 and make sure you take two pass encoding that will reduce the size by a lot and turbo first pass so, uh, make the first pass uh, faster. So now optimize video. Now this X264 preset is pretty important. So it's, it's set to very fast, super fast, down to very slow. Now which setting you want to use? If you set it to ultra fast, it's going to be pretty fast. Like within probably within an hour. But the output file will be grainy. You can see actually the small pixels. So it's it's too fast and quality is not good. If you do <coughs> go to the like very slow, it will take we're talking about days, maybe a day or two days, to do a, a really good f big file. It's too too slow for me, but if you want the best quality and the, the least size, maybe you want to go with that, or you have a super fast computer. Uh, for me, I choose either medium or fast. I, I normally do fast because I'm impatient. So for the fast, probably take a few hours to, to encode this, this video, and the result is acceptable. It's not as sharp as, of course, the original, but when you look at it on the computer or tablet or s cell phone or stream online, it's okay. So you can compare the difference. But I, I think it's okay for me on, on the fast setting. You can do, if you do medium, probably take less than a day to, I mean, a few hours more to do it. Uh, quality should be better. Uh, but I, I don't want to do ultra fast or very slow. Uh, Neither is an option for me, but you can do all these and test the, the end results. And so the other things we can just leave the same. So on the video tab, that's all we need to do. Codec, frame rate, average bit rate, take two pass and turbo fast pass, and set the, the speed to fast or medium. And the last thing we do is audio. First thing you want to add audio track, obviously, otherwise there will be no sound. Add the audio track and double check the audio track. And if you don't need, I mean, the bit rate you can set to 128. That will be the uh, acceptable but lower bit rate. And depending on the, what kind of mix you want, you probably don't need, for this kind of quality, this kind of compression, you probably don't need 5.1 channels. So you can do uh, Adobe or auto automatic, or something like that, stereo, right? And then that's it. And the press start. It will start compressing. You go two passes. The uh, the underlying will show you a percentage. The first pass will pass 100 percent. It's pretty fast within uh, half an hour. And the second pass will take longer, probably two hours. And uh, depending on how fast your computer is, this is the only case when I find my computer, the, my i3 computer is not good enough. Otherwise, I, I, I had been perfectly fine with my computer, but only up until this point, uh, I find that processing video is pretty slow. Anyway, so after all this, 
uh, once you, you get the uh, end result, you'll be pleased to see that it's well below 700 megabytes. And the quality for online streaming or on a smaller screen, even on TV, on a small screen, is perfectly OK. Sound is OK. And basically, this is the trick how they do it. Those online videos, they compress it to this point that it's acceptable, but not perfect. And the size is really, really small. Okay, thank you for watching this video. And have a good day.